Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. Go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest headlines and to subscribe to the Savage newsletter. Well, it gets delivered free to your inbox. Can't ask for a better deal than that. While you're at michaelsavage.com, pick up a copy of Trump's War. More important now than ever, it is the battle plan for our agenda. And it is more important now than ever, folks. You see what our president is up against. You see what the media is trying to do to him. Most times they come up empty, but their initial salvo uh, seems like it's leaving a mark, and then he has an amazing way of recovering. And that's the thing about Trump. They're always underestimating him. And, well, the blueprint for that is written out in Trump's war, his battle for America. Dr. Savage has been telling you, well, for years now, from when he took that magical escal- escalate ride or escalator ride, excuse me, down Trump Towers with his wife, announced his presidency. The battle began that moment. And it's all there in Trump's war, his battle for America. It's like reading what's going on in our current times in real times. Dr. Savage nails it at everything. Once you pick it up, you are not going to be able to put it down. You might even read it twice. And pick up a copy for your friend here at the cornerstone of the Trump presidency, the Savage Nation. Well, there is a lot going on that we have to talk about, and it all pertains to Donald Trump's tweets and how the media is handling his tweets. And the question is, is Donald Trump hurting himself? Is he hurting his agenda, our agenda and our future as he fights for us with his tweets Is he taking away attention from what I feel are his many numerous accomplishments? Now, Dr. Savage has addressed this on numerous occasions, more so recently, but on numerous occasions talking about the tweeting and how he feels Donald Trump's tweets are hurting his agenda. And I have to say, well, I'll tell you my opinion on it, but let's first hear Dr. Savage in his own words about President Trump's tweets. Robert, if you will. From the savage nation to the tweeting nation in only a short period of time. Last night, even I tweeted. I went on to my tweet thing there. I forget if the president's doing it and so many others do it. I paid no attention to it. I had a tweet thing since 08. I never did it. I had other people do it once in a month or once a year. Who cared? And I tweeted something and it got attacked. I said, Trump's bitter Twitter has to stop. Our revolution threatened by petty feuds. Bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter. Now, by dint of the fact that everyone's talking about his tweeting, it means that the tweeting is no good. I know many of you believe that he's getting even with the vermin in the media, and he is. But that is the problem. He should not be focused on these losers, these psychos in the media. He's giving them exactly what they want, which is publicity. And so, therefore, since we're talking about whether or not Trump's tweeting is hurting his agenda... It means it's hurting his agenda. Even the Fox News poll, 71% say the president's tweets are hurting his agenda. I know I can load a, I can load a poll in any way I want. If you're going to ask, are the president's tweets hurting his agenda, you're going to get that kind of answer. But by dint of the fact that we're even asking the question, it means that he is hurting his agenda. There's a lot of good that Donald Trump is doing, and he's undermining his own agenda by making us focus on these petty feuds, in my opinion. And there you have Dr. Savage in his own words, even though he's not here today and I'm here for him, it's like he is here. Well, I'll tell you what, as much as I love most of Donald Trump's tweets, he makes me cringe once in a while. And on occasion, he makes them hard to defend. I have to say that when I'm on my treadmill and I'm watching CNN and Fox and MSNBC, mostly MSNBC and Fox criticizing the president, I have to say now They're taking away, as Dr. Savage said in that clip. You would have asked me that question two weeks ago. Is Donald Trump tweeting too much? Well, you can never tweet too much. You don't want to take away anybody's right to a First Amendment free uh, free speech. But are his tweets hurting his agenda? Or is it hurting getting his message out? And I got to say, yeah, at this point, at this point, it is. Um, 
do do I want him to stop tweeting? No. Should he stop tweeting? Yes. Not all the time. Just put out your policy agenda. Put out like when the Dakota pipeline was pushed through. Put out when you revamp things for the Veterans Administration, trying to get that back up on his right foot. Tweet out that bids are coming in for the wall. And tweet out ad nauseum when you were in the Middle East with that extremely successful trip that the media refused to cover except for a mere mention that you were there. Stay out of the, the gutter politics with gutter slime like Mika Brzezinski, who's just another nepotism hire over at MSNBC, the daughter of Jimmy Carter's foreign policy advisor, Brzezinski. I forget his first name. He just died last year. It's one of those things where you're giving them ammunition and you're elevating them to your level. You are the president of the United States and you have to do the people's business not the media's business, and he has been good for media business. Let me tell you something. Even uh, as Trump would call him crazy, Joe Scarborough, who appears he's trying to look like Where's Waldo these days with the pompadour haircut and the round glasses. All we have to do is give him the striped scarf. He was crowing on Twitter today about high ratings and how the feud has been great for their ratings and everybody else. Jeff Zucker, who I I agree with Dr. Savage, along with uh, Phil Griffith, should be called before Congress to answer why they have been spreading false news, misinformation, fake news about the Russia story, which we know now is factually correct. But to tweet or not to tweet, if I could kind of rip off William Shakespeare. And although the president should not stop tweeting, he should tweet only policy. People are counting these things. I was watching TV this morning. And they said of all of Trump's tweets, only I think they said three had to do with policy. And here's the deal. The media has not given Trump a fair share since the beginning. Okay, And if he had never tweeted anything ever once, they were not going to give him a fair shake. They just weren't going to do it. Okay, And he's just making it worse for himself because they're twisting everything. CNN was backed into a corner the other day. They had them with their pants down, okay? And fake news, producers saying it's all BS, Van Jones saying the Russia story was a nothing burger. He had them neck to the wall. They couldn't move, and he gave them an out. He gave them a pass on the very next morning with the Mika facelift bleeding tweet, and the media jumped on that. And now we see a few days later with the Vince McMahon WWF that, by the way, that video is from 2007 WrestleMania. It was, you know, it was a good guy, bad guy, Vince McMahon. The loser was going to have to get a crew cut. That, you know, that's neither here nor there. Vince McMahon ended up with a crew cut. Donald Trump didn't. But now to superimpose CNN on that and he body slams CNN, they're turning it into a thing of violence. Is he inciting violence when we know that's it so they lie because they're disgusting repugnant human beings and they lie incessantly so dr savage is ahead of the curve when he tells him to stop tweeting not because he's trying to shut him up not because he's trying to take away his bully pulpit as the presidency is often called not because he's trying to take away his right to free speech it's because he's trying to help him He's trying to help him clarify the message to the American people, which right now is muddled. Uh, You know, you heard them say in the clip, you can get a poll to say anything you want, basically. But at the end of the day, President Trump's numbers are slipping because people are not aware of the good work that he is doing. I don't care if it's some crazy left wing lunatic liberal. If if jobs are being added, that can't be denied. Okay. if roads are being fixed, if our veterans are being taken care of, our our schools are improving, if crime is going down, there is no way that they can spin that message. There's no way they can muddle that message unless, of course, they have a distraction. And the distraction has been the tweets as much as I love. them, I love the tweets. And many of them are entertaining. Some would say they're petty, but he is not dragging himself down to the level of an MSNBC or a CNN or a Jeff Zucker or a Phil Griffin. What he's doing is elevating them. I had someone say to me the other day, I never heard of this Mika Brzezinski, whatever her name was. They didn't know. Brzezinski. I don't mispronounce names, on, uh, but they didn't know the name. They didn't know this person. They said, who is she? I said, oh, she's 
some person on MSNBC, father got of the job, whatever. And I never heard of her. Now she's all over the place. Every time I, I click on my tablet, she's there. I put on the TV, she's there. Everybody's talking about this woman. That's why they're loving it. And there's another reason why he has to stop tweeting. But most importantly is because it is taking away from getting the message out. He said some wonderful things. Donald Trump did the other day at the uh, Celebrate Freedom rally at the JFK Center for Performing Arts. We have clips. We'll play them a little later in the show. Great stuff. Crowd's going crazy. Great message, especially uh, around 4th of July time. Have you heard any of it? I've hardly heard any of it, and I'm entrenched in this stuff. It's because all they're talking about is the Mika Joe thing with MSNBC. All they're talking about is the new, the latest false narrative that Donald Trump is inciting violence against journalists. When we have the media ginning up crazies like the guy who shot Representative Scalise. Constantly, eight, nine months of anti-Trump uh, messages coming out from the media this this lunatic goes out there with a gun shoots four people scalise is still in the hospital you never even hear an update about his health we hear how trump's going to blow up the world trump is mentally deranged and they push and they push and they push and then it's the democrats who say republicans are trying to kill people are, are is the world going bizarro is the world going nuts so donald trump has to stop he has to re he has to regroup and tweet only when necessary. Listen, I'm on Twitter, and it's hard sometimes to hold back. You want to fire away at these people, but then, then it's out there forever, and someone's going to hold you to it. You ha This all began back in early March when Trump sent out the tweet, Terrible. I just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. And that kind of launched the media war with Trump because they've gone after him. He cited a New York Times January 20th article that talked about the wiretapping as his safety net, but the media doesn't care. They don't care about accuracy. They don't want to ever let the facts get in the way of a good narrative that will possibly hurt Trump. So you heard it first. You heard it here from Dr. Savage himself. Donald Trump is only hurting himself, only elevating the vermin in the media to his level by tweeting with them. Get on with the people's business. And get the business done. If you're creating jobs, if you're strengthening the infrastructure and making education better and health care for our veterans and all of our people, there's nothing the media can say. So, President Trump, we love you and we want you to succeed. So keep tweeting. We don't want to take that away from you, but don't go down in the gutter and don't elevate them up to the level of the presidency of the United States. My name is Lou Pate. You are listening to the home of Trump's war, his battle for America, and the battle goes on. If you want to get in on the conversation, it's 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. My name is Lou Pate, and you are listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Um. Welcome back. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. Remember to go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest headlines and to subscribe to the Savage newsletter, which is delivered free to your inbox. While there, pick up a copy of Trump's War. As you see from what's going on in the media, it is more important now than ever. This message has to get out there. It's the battle plan for our agenda. And I kid you not, Trump's war, his battle for America. We're talking about Trump's tweeting. Uh, should he stop? Is it hurting his message? Is it hurting his agenda? How do you feel? 855-400-SAVAGE. In the first segment, we were talking about Dr. Savage and how he said President Trump should stop tweeting because it is distracting from the agenda. It is taking away from the agenda and all of his accomplishments. Do you agree? I have to say I agree as much as I love his tweets because it's not even a distraction as much as, yes, it distracts, but it distracts because the, the people like Brian Stelter and others in the media take it for something it's not. For instance, the satirical body slamming of CNN from the old 2007 WWF clip, they took that and twisted it into, is Trump inciting 
violence against journalists. It, it, it's incredible. Actually, Robert, if we can, um, if we can play clip number 10 before we get to the rest, because this, this woman, this little fire plug on CNN, Anna Navarro, drives me insane with her lies and her, her hatred for our president. If you can, clip number 10, please. I'm a CNN commentator. I think that is unacceptable. I think that is the president of the United States taking things way too far. It is an incitement to violence. He is going to get somebody killed in the media. Maybe that will stop him. It's lies like that that Dr. Savage is referring to when he when he says that Trump should stop tweeting because you have people like that Anna Navarro saying he's going to get somebody killed in the media. There's no one in the media who's been attacked. I'm not talking about trolls on Twitter or trolls on Facebook or maybe some knucklehead who calls the switchboard and says, I hate so and so and I'm going to kill. I mean, it's it's disturbing if someone does that. But no Nobody in the media has been harmed. There have been no assaults. Nothing has happened. The only assaults have come from the left, from the February riots in Berkeley to the shooting of Representative Scalise and three others and and numerous others in between. The only violence has come from people on the left. So it's a joke when these people say these types of things. Um, Also, Robert, do we have time? It's it's an 18 second clip. Do we have for uh, number 11? Brian Stelter from CNN. Is this president trying to impersonate Hugo Chavez, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Vladimir Putin? Because this is exactly the kind of language that leaders use when they are trying to undermine the press. Of course, the American press is much more free than reporters in places like Russia and Turkey and Venezuela. I guess the names Hitler and El Duce were rented for that day, so he went with Chavez, Erdogan, and Putin. Are you kidding me? This is the type of lies they tell, and this is what distracts. It's not just in a distraction from the truth that, you know, the, tr- the, the tweet might have been a little cringeworthy. They take it and twist it into something else. Note, they don't talk about the condition of Representative Scalise. Unbelievable. Your calls when we come back, 855-400-SAVAGE. My name is Lou Pate, sitting in here on July 4th weekend for Dr. Savage. He'll return on Wednesday. You are listening to The Savage Nation, the home of Trump's war his battle for America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Paid filling in for Dr. Savage. But remember to get all the latest headlines and subscribe to the Savage newsletter. Go to michaelsavage.com. While there, hey, it's 4th of July weekend, pick up a copy of Trump's War, more important now than ever. And uh, this is what we're talking about here, folks, what Dr. Savage is talking about in Trump's War, the media attacks, the, the attacks on our culture, the attacks on everything pertaining to us moving forward as a country is there in Trump's war, his battle for America. I encourage you to go see um, Newsmax.com, an excellent site for information. And there's a new article that just popped up there, Savage on why Trump should be tweeting, hurting his agenda. On his, I'll just read a bit of it here for you. On his radio show Friday, Michael Savage addressed his Thursday tweet that President Donald Trump's bitter Twitter needs to stop. I know many of you believe that he's getting even with the vermin in the media, and he is, but that is the problem. He should not be focused on these losers. Now, that's part of the clip we just played for you before. And it goes on. These psychos in the media, he's giving them exactly what they want, which is publicity, Savage continued. Since we're talking about whether these tweets are hurting his agenda, then... They're hurting his agenda. And it goes on, so I encourage you, go to Newsmax.com, check out the latest news. Of course, even when he's, even when he's off for the day, Dr. Michael Savage is making news around the world. So go to Newsmax.com, and plus uh, run by Chris Ruddy. Chris Ruddy's a good guy, so uh, check out his site. Um, 855-400-SAVAGE, let's get to the phones. Uh, Bill in WJCW in Tennessee, welcome to the Savage Nation. 
Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. So is this hurting the agenda? Should he continue to tweet? Where do you stand? Well, uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, You're welcome. I, I personally am, I crack up every time I see some of his tweets. I think they are hilarious. Um, and I laugh. I genuinely laugh at them. I, I look, Trump is actually, you know, accomplishing his agenda very well. The, you know, he's continuously working. Uh, the Congress cannot seem to even keep up with him. And it is they, it is they, Congress, who is dragging their feet and not getting anything done and is not working to accomplish Trump's agenda. It's not Trump himself. He's working hard. One of his enemies is the media, and he attacks them, and he does it, he does it with humor and good cheer, and he has good cheer in his heart when he does it. He doesn't do it with hatred, and it doesn't make me cringe. It makes me laugh, and I can't believe it would make somebody cringe. Uh, all due respect to you. But. No, that's a, hey, no, that's okay. Some of them are cringeworthy, Bill. I don't mean that like, oh, and I cringe like I hate that and don't do that and you're a jerk for doing it. It's like, oh, he's given his, his, his enemies ammunition to use against you. I'll, I'll cite just quickly, Bill, what I re- or said earlier, but it bears worth repeating. He had CNN backed into a corner with that producer audio that came out, which basically put the Russia story to bed that CNN says it's all BS and Van Jones saying it's a nothing burger. He had them dead to rights. They were out, checkmate, count to 10, whatever you want to call it. And he gives them a pass the next day with the Mika facelift. That's when I cringe. It's like, you had them. Why'd you let them go? Do you see what I mean? Well, I, I, I don't agree with you, but I'm... Um... I don't. I don't feel like he hurt himself, or I just feel like he just keeps, you know, just keeps. All right. Keeps All right, Bill. We'll we'll have to agree to disagree. But thank you for that call, and happy Fourth of July. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Chuck WFTW. Chuck, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Doing all right. Hope you're doing well. I'm well. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm agreeing with everyone else. These tweets are not hurting him. Um, based on the fact we voted him in because of the fight in him, and. The conversation's pretty coarse, been coarse for a long time. People just don't seem to remember, you know, when people were calling uh, soldiers, you know, brown shirts and pole pot and all that good stuff. You know, Spit, back, spitting yeah. on them, Chuck, spitting on them when they came home from Vietnam. Now, I, I'll cite to you what Dr. Savage said in that clip, the Fox News poll, 71% of viewers think Trump's tweets are hurting his agenda. Now... I gotta say, Chuck, I didn't even know about the speech, and I'm in, I'm immersed in this stuff all the time. And this one got past me like a bad hockey goalie. Um, the cel- the celebrate freedom rally at the JFK Center for Performing Arts. Uh, I didn't even know that this speech took place. And when I went back and listened to the clips of the speech, it's a great speech. You don't hear about it, just like we didn't hear about his successes in the Middle East because they the media uses it as a distraction, and then they just make stuff up. Come on, inciting violence. No one's even been hurt. No one's even been hit. No one's even been hit with a shooting rubber band. Never mind anything more more dangerous. They just make it up, Chuck. Well, they made it up during the Middle East tour, in which every other uh, news outlet was saying, "Wow, you know, this was impressive," and he was so well received. And the mainstream media was was uh, talking about how he did the sword dance with the misogynists in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I remember that. I All right. Believe- All right. I, I appreciate that, Chuck. I do. Uh, see, we'll see where, where the other where the other voices in the Savage Nation go. Hey, we're a family here at the Savage Nation. Family members are not always going to agree. It's like Thanksgiving. Now, uh, let's go to um, Tyler, KK, KKOH in Reno. Kyle, how are we doing, Tyler? Well, I agree with those who say that he shouldn't stop, but I'll tell you the reason why. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was maligned back when he was president. People said, oh, he had sex with Sally Hemings. Well, he he didn't have sex with Sally Hemings, according to him, but he thought it was below the presidency to openly contest with the press over such what he thought was minor things. And as history has taught us now that – People still say that he had sex with Sally Hemings because of that, because he didn't answer those tit-for-tats every time somebody tried to smear him. So I think uh, the tone and the content definitely needs to change to be more presidential, more uh, on point, and less on smear. But I think that what he's doing is effectively going around the uh, garbage media and uh, it would help a lot if uh, talk radio stations across the land would stop referring to MSNBC and CNN 
and instead refer people to other news organizations and completely ignore that garbage. Uh, I think that the main thing that we need to do as a people is to get back to a more rational uh, media. And the only way we're going to do that is to break up the monopolies or the oligopolies of the media and have more local-owned stations and more local-owned media outlets. Uh, We have a big problem right now because the huge... uh, oligarchs in the media are controlling the message on that side. Uh, You can look at all the evening programming, and it's all, you know, Trump hate, nonstop. All the time. Now, hey, let me ask you this, Tyler. How... I would like it if Donald Trump, not because the media shut him down, I know they'd claim victory, but I would love it if he didn't tweet for an entire week or didn't tweet for two entire weeks. And, yeah, the media would claim that they they shut him down and they would claim victory, but they would also be crying and bellyaching. They would be begging him to tweet out something, even, even if it's as simple as, hello, I'm here. So he should really teach them a lesson and just stop for two weeks because it would grind their money-making machine to a halt. What do you think? Well, what he could do is instead of talking about somebody's facelift, he could uh, instead tweet out something that refers people to an alternative media site. And that way it would bolster the people who would be telling the truth about his administration, and it would cut the throats of the people who are always trying to undermine him. I don't even watch those uh, MSNBC and CNN and I don't watch late-night talk shows anymore because they're all Trump bashing. And I encourage people just to stop watching the damn things. They're just garbage. Yeah, but, you know, millennials, they're out there getting stoned, and that's what they do. They watch that stuff. (laughs) After they they tweet up, they they, they watch that stuff. But, Tyler, thanks for your call from KKOH. Do appreciate it. Let's uh, go to San Francisco. Chris, KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you, Chris? Hey, I'm doing well, thank you. I disagree. I think uh, Donald Trump should tweet on and on. If he did not tweet, Lou, they would make something up, just like they already have done in the past. When he does something great, they'll skip over the story, move on to something that's not true. That's what they do. So let him tweet. Let him talk about his tweets all they want. Um, but they did it for when he when he when he overturned the, the climate accord. When he when he uh, brought in Gorsuch. When Everything he's done, he either didn't talk about it or wanted to point to something, overturning Obamacare, oh, he's going to make people die. It doesn't matter. People are smarter than that. We're smarter. We know. It doesn't matter what CNN, even Fox, what they say. Let him tweet. That's what he does. No other president has done it. No other president has been Donald Trump. So just I like that. I'll tell you what, though, they've not they're not they've not given him a fair shake since the day he announced. And then he was elected. And now since he's been inaugurated, they have not given him a fair shake. And not at all. And it's not it's not going even if he never tweeted again, they would just find some other garbage to to um, come up with. It's exa- and people are smarter than that. The people who aren't smart or that other, the non-deplorables, I guess you could say, because Mm -hmm. they don't really look at the issues and the substance of the issues. It's the substance. What they look at is the late-night Conan O'Brien or whoever it is, you know, the the funny tagline that they might say on their late-night show, whatever it is, and they take that as their truth, as their Bible. If they want to do that, that's fine. They're uninformed. They don't know the, the issues of what's going on in this world, and I'm glad that we do. And there are conservative voices that are out there that can share the word with other people and let them know. You know, sounds, that, that, sounds good to me. I like I like the way you think there, Chris. Thank you very much for your call. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Hey, folks, the the narrative before the whole Russia thing was that Trump was mentally ill, mentally unstable to be president, and he was irrational. And then the Russia stuff started, and they ran with that, and it changed the narrative. Now the Russia thing is blown up in their faces, which is the media using Trump and the accusations of violence to try and distract from the fact that they have been disseminating fake news. Now it's back to the stability of Trump's mind and impeachment again. Robert, if we will, can we play cut number 11, please? This is Carl Bernstein from Watergate fame. First, it's not just uh, anti-CNN. It's anti-freedom of the press. It's anti-freedom of speech. It is a definitive statement by the President of the United States. Uh, And it also goes to the question that many military leaders in this questions are asked, questions 
uh, raised by military leaders in this country now, uh, by the intelligence community, by people in Congress, about the stability of the President of the United States. This is an index of his state of mind, uh, visually. See, now they're going to try dragging that dead horse out again that the president is mentally unfit to be in office. Mika Brzezinski, I hate to even say her name. She was because she questioned his uh, mental wellness on more than one occasion. So you see, this is what they're going to go out. Actually, they got a a group together. There's uh, 25 Democratic senators who are going to try and pursue impeachment under the grounds that men, uh, Trump is mentally unstable. Of course, it's not going to work, number one. Vice President Mike Pence would have to be on board, and that would never happen. But the reality, what they're trying to do is give the perception that Trump is crazy. And again, it all has to do with the 2018 midterm election, and then, of course, re-election, possibly in 2020. That's all it has to do with. It's all about painting your mind to think that this guy is nuts. They know that they could never impeach him. You cannot impeach someone simply because you do not like them. It is not the way democracy works. So in, instead, they're going to try to poison the well. They tried to poison it with craziness before, saying he was unstable. That didn't work. Then they went to Russia, and that didn't work. And ev- they have thrown everything they have and more against this man, and it never works. So far, he's always come out on top. Some of the wounds have been self-inflicted due to those tweets, but most of the time they just come at him with craziness, like now he's the body slam, the satirical video body slamming CNN is somehow pushing violence. Meanwhile, the Democrats are the only ones who have been violent, and they are the ones saying Republicans are trying to kill people. They're the ones saying President Trump is inciting violence. They're as insane as they are dishonest. 855-400-SAVAGE. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back. In the meantime, go to michaelsavage.com, get your headlines, sign up for the newsletter, order that copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. If the news on this big holiday weekend, July 4th, when we celebrate the independence of our nation, has not convinced you that the media is against everything this country stands for, well, then you're truly going to enjoy Trump's war, his battle for America even more. My name is Lou Pate. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. And remember to pick up your copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. It's amazing the battle that is going on and how the Trump's War, His Battle for America, really foretells what was going on with that battle. Every time I am privileged enough to sit in for Dr. Savage, I put out a tweet that says, you know, I will be on the Savage Nation, the home of Trump's War, His Battle for America. I couldn't I couldn't have imagined even nine months ago the way Dr. Savage did and the way he put it into the book, the battles that lie ahead. Uh, it, it's amazing. It, it's never ending. This is never going to end what the media is doing to the president and indirectly what the media is doing to you. But is the media being played? Representative Scott Taylor, he's a Republican from Virginia, criticized CNN on Monday and said the network and the media are, and I quote, getting played by President Trump by covering his tweets instead of the real issues. Let's let you hear it in his own words. Robert, clip 13, please. I've been critical of the president's tweets before. Uh, I think that, but but I, if I could give some objective advice to you, I think you, I think you guys are getting played, man. I think every time he does this, you guys overreact, and I say you guys, I mean the media in general. You overreact, and you play right into his hands. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, it's, ironically, CNN mm-hmm. reported on him learning politics from the World Wrestling Federation in 2015. Yeah. Uh, and, th- and now you're like, oh, my God, he's inciting violence. I just don't, I don't think any American, mm-hmm. uh, most Americans, excuse me, certainly some maybe, but most Americans out there believe that he's inciting violence from a WWF mm-hmm. clip. 
Not logical Americans, I'll tell you that. Most people see right through this, and a lot of Trump supporters, although like me, I think I'm pretty level-headed, I get cringeworthy from some of the tweets, but the base is very loyal. And I do think the media underestimates the base of Donald Trump and how much they support him. But that doesn't take away that the media is using them and it is getting in the way of the message, as Dr. Savage said. If you're holding, please continue to hold. We're going to take your calls right after the top of the hour. You are listening to The Savage Nation, the home of Trump's war, his battle for America. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. Thrilled to be here. Privileged to be here. And in the meantime, before you get to the calls at 855-400-SAVAGE, go to michaelsavage.com for the latest headlines. Subscribe to the Savage Newsletter. It's delivered free to your inbox. Can't ask for a better deal than that. And while at michaelsavage.com, pick up a copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. More important now than ever, it's the battle plan for our agenda. We were talking in the last hour how Dr. Savage is now making national headlines in his call for Donald Trump to stop tweeting, stop elevating the vermin in the media up to his level because it is distracting, taking away attention from the agenda for the people. Not that he's trying to take away his First Amendment right, not that he's trying to silence him, actually trying to help him. And we're asking the question, should Donald Trump, should President Trump stop tweeting? Is it hurting his message? Is it hurting what he is trying to accomplish for the people? 855-400-SAVAGE. We're also going to talk about a few other things that are going on. Barack Obama is urging the world to stand against, and I quote, aggressive nationalism. Yeah, He's out there in Indonesia running around with his family on vacation. I don't begrudge him for that, but he's calling up calling on the world to stand up for tolerance, moderation, and respect for others, warning that sectarian politics could lead to chaos and violence. Now, folks, the the, the irony there, for all of you in the Savage Nation family, all of you in the Savage Nation listening area, you know that that is the irony of irony. He's calling for people to stand up for tolerance, moderation, respect for others and warning that sectarian politics could lead to chaos and violence. The reason I repeat it is because that is everything that he and the left are against. Liberals in America, probably liberals around the world, are the most intolerant people ever created on God's earth. It is truly amazing. He said, and I quote, it's been clear for a while that the world is at a crossroads at an inflection point. What does that even mean? It's just more jargon. It's what everybody in America here voted against. So we're going to talk about that. And also the fact about our millennials, the younger generation. Gosh, I'm not even old. I don't want to sound like the old man saying these kids today. But um, a third of millennials say they are not patriotic. Are we losing our patriotism here in America? I know certain groups are losing their religion, but are we losing our patriotism? You could have freedom of religion. You could be Jew, Gentile. You could be whatever you want. But patriotism is something that covers us all. It's something that we all need to be in order to move the nation forward. You have to love your country in order to help it move forward. You don't have to agree with everything your country does, but you have to love it and work with it on those things you disagree. It's called patience. It's called tolerance. But millennials don't seem to care. All they care about is what's on their tablet, what's on their phone. So we'll talk about that as well. But before we get back to the phones, I'd like to play the soundbite. This is Dr. Michael Savage just on his last show talking about President Trump and how he should stop tweeting. 
Do you agree? And we'll get right back to your calls. Robert, if you will. From the savage nation to the tweeting nation, in only a short period of time, last night even I tweeted. I went on to my tweet thing there. I forget if the president's doing it and so many others do it. I paid no attention to it. I had a tweet thing since 08. I never did it. I had other people do it once in a month or once a year. Who cared? And I tweeted something and it got attacked. I said, Trump's bitter Twitter has to stop. Our revolution threatened by petty feuds. Bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter, bitter Twitter. Now, by dint of the fact that everyone's talking about his tweeting, it means that the tweeting is no good. I know many of you believe that he's getting even with the vermin in the media, and he is. But that is the problem. He should not be focused on these losers, these psychos in the media. He's giving them exactly what they want, which is publicity. And so, therefore, since we're talking about whether or not Trump's tweeting is hurting his agenda, it means it's hurting his agenda. Even the Fox News poll, 71% say the president's tweets are hurting his agenda. I know I can load a, I can load a poll in any way I want. If you're going to ask, are the president's tweets hurting his agenda, you're going to get that kind of answer. But by dint of the fact that we're even asking the question, it means that he is hurting his agenda. There's a lot of good that Donald Trump is doing, and he's undermining his own agenda by making us focus on these petty feuds, in my opinion. There you have it, Dr. Michael Savage. He'll return on Wednesday. Michael, KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm doing okay. How can I help you today? Well, I couldn't disagree with uh, Michael Savage more. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm also a licensed psychologist. And it is his tweets exactly or is why he got elected and why he's going to stay elected. Somebody is finally saying what people are thinking. The silent majority has risen up. I don't think they're hurting him. I think if he quits tweeting, I think he's done, finished, over. He got elected. I mean, how is it possible for a man to call somebody Little Marco or, or, or Lazy Jeb or Low Energy Jeb and attack or say something like, I could shoot somebody and not lose a vote? How is it possible in America somebody like that could get elected. I got news for you. He won 3,147 electoral college votes to 57. That's how he is saying what the American people want to hear. And it's about time that talk show hosts quit romanticizing and quit pontificating and intellectualizing what's happening. Okay, so basically, Michael, thank you for your call. You're saying his message has resonated with the people, regardless of uh, what that is. Okay, Ron, WABC New York, welcome to the Savage Nation. Ron, how are you? Boy, I couldn't agree with the last guy even more. I, um, also, you, uh, Fox News, uh, their polls, I, I can't remember the last time they've ever been right on any one of their polls. Um, your your uh, call screener said, well, that's a scientific poll. Uh, Drudge Report has a poll out that 77% the last time I checked. uh, Are you referring to the one that says, should Trump use socials? Yes. And the last time I checked it, which was before I went to work, was uh, 77% that he should keep tweeting. So uh, I find his tweets absolutely humorous. Um, They're attacking him, his family, his daughter, on a constant basis. Um, uh, We hired... We wanted a, a, a real boss as president who doesn't take crap from anybody, and I think uh, that's all we have with him. And he is he's not putting up with anything. And I don't really think it affects his agenda because it only takes him uh, 20 seconds to type out a tweet like that. And then he- yeah, but, Ron, it only, takes, it only takes 20 seconds to type out a tweet, and then they, co- they cover it or misrepresent it like they did the Russia story for the next two weeks. I am not saying, and, and, and Dr. Savage is not saying, stop tweeting, but is it, getting, is it hurting his message? Is it getting in the way? The problem is they don't cover his message, ever. You were just talking about his speeches that he made, and the great thing, I never saw that on any of the news. They don't cover anything that's positive from Trump ever. So if he, he just, if he if he stopped giving them excuses to deviate from his accomplishments, if he stopped the um, tweeting with attacking people in the media, which I think they deserve it. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Will they will they give him a fair shake and cover his accomplishments or no? I just think they make stuff up then, like the other guy said. Then they'll make stuff up. True. And by the way, I think well, they've been making up Russia stuff for the last nine months, have they not? Yeah. 
All right, Ron, thanks for your call. Do appreciate it. Let's go out to Colorado. KVOR, Greg, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thanks very much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. The floor is yours, Greg. How can we help you? Well, here's the thing. I, I want to say this real quick. About four months ago, five months ago, I, I got rid of my cable because I was so tired of seeing what I was seeing on the media. It was, it was absolutely disgusting. So I turned, uh, talk, turned to talk radio. I mean, I've listened to you guys before, and I just said, you know what? This is so much better. My days are better. I'm not glued to a boob tube. And I think everybody around the world is doing the same thing. Well, in, in the U.S., I think there's a lot of people I've talked to that said, you know what? I did the same thing, Greg. Uh, I, I'm set up. I pulled the cable plug. I'm done. You, you know, know, but Greg, and, and you're right, but, you know, the ratings that they are experiencing now cannot be denied because a lot of people did vote for Hillary. Why they would vote for a, a crooked, a, not just another crooked politician whose guilt is beyond question, but a lot of people did, and they're enjoying this. Look, Greg, there was no outcry with the assassination of the president in Mock's ass assassination at the Shakespeare play. The Kathy Griffith thing, you know, the beheading, you know, she lost her gigs, but now that has gone away. They mocked his son as a serial killer in waiting they've mocked his although they're pro-immigrant they mocked his wife for having an accent there is just no end to you know how low these people are, are going to go i know I, I couldn't agree with you more with that and i'm telling you tomorrow being the fourth of july celebrating our independence as a nation and our freedom and as a retired uh, air force master sergeant i'll tell you what i served under five different presidents uh i tried to respect every one of them uh, what we're doing and allowing the media to do to go out and just bash our president the day before we celebrate our most important day in the history of this nation, it's absolutely disgusting. And uh, I think they need to turn around and uh, take a good look at themselves. And I'll say, you know what, term limits would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, Greg, thanks for your call. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. My name is Lou Pate. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Go to michaelsavage.com, get all your latest headlines, subscribe to The Savage Newsletter. And the reason you are hearing in this conversation today is more so why you should pick up a copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. Remember, for all things Savage, go to michaelsavage.com, and you can also get the latest headlines. Subscribe to the Savage newsletter delivered free to your inbox and pick up a copy of Trump's War, more important now than ever. It's the battle plan for our agenda. And that is the question now. Is President Trump's tweets hurting his agenda? And should he stop? We played the audio twice already of Dr. Savage telling Trump to stop tweeting. And also going on out there, we have Barack Obama running around the world for telling people to take a stand against against aggressive nationalism. And um, we want your calls on that as well. And also a third of millennials, not patriotic. How do we get them interested in our country? You know why? They've never had to sacrifice. They've never had to live through a war. They've never been. And I don't like war. I'm not promoting it and i'm not saying i'm a tough guy but i don't think you could fully appreciate something until you realize you have a chance of losing it that's just part of it but we're talking about the media here and is it hurting is it hurting his message these tweets dr savage says it is i say it is to a certain point but will the media ever give him a fair shake if he never tweeted again the media would miss the tweets but if he never donald trump never tweeted again would they cover the accomplishments? Would they talk positively about Justice Gorsuch? No. Would they talk about the Dakota and Keystone Pipeline? Would they talk about the VA? Would they talk about pulling us out of the Paris Accord? Would they talk about his, his very successful trip to the Middle East and on and on and on? No, they will not. But now he's giving them ammunition to use against him. Let's uh, hear from the president. Uh, Robert, this is clip number seven. 
The dishonest media will never keep us from accomplishing our objectives on behalf of our great American people. Will never happen. Their agenda is not your agenda. You've been saying it. I will never stop fighting for you. I am delivering on trade, on the economy, on the Supreme Court, on the Second Amendment, on our military, for our veterans, and on our borders, where we are doing record, record stoppage. Well, you're certainly not going to hear that from the media. I'll tell you that. You're not going to hear that on CNN or MSNBC. So you have to hear it from the president himself. He has 33 million Twitter followers. Uh, Truly amazing. Uh, Let's get back to the phones. Uh, Rosemary, WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi. Um, You know, you have to have a sense of humor in this world. Uh, and uh, I crack up laughing just like a gentleman who called before said uh, he does when he sees uh, or reads or hears of the president's tweets. Um, the left only has a sense of humor when they're attacking and trying to uh, 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 obliterate the right and and, and uh, squash them into the pavement. Then they think that's hysterically funny because they're very sadistic and they only go after the right. Um, Saturday Night Live I stopped watching years ago because they're very bigoted towards the right. They only make fun uh, of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, right. They never make fun of the left, even though that's a gold mine. Well, I'll tell you what, Rosemary, Lorne Michaels wouldn't know humor if it ran him over in the street. He's afraid to take a chance on humor. Lorne Michaels plays it safe. It's very sad because comedy should be unlimited and, and both sides should be attacked in, in a com- comedic way but you know Lorne Michaels has he's been he's made hundreds of millions of dollars but he hasn't been funny in over 40 years and the comedy on Saturday Night Live it's it's pathetic I mean Alec Baldwin you know if if his imitation of Trump wasn't coming from a place of sour grapes about the election if it wasn't coming from a place of hate it might be funny another another one is the what's his name Stephen Colbert who likes you know Colbert whatever his name is vile depictions you know we're going to talk a little later rosemary uh, vincente fox put out a vile video about uh, president trump it's supposed to be satire but he talks about incest with the president and his daughter i mean they wouldn't know humor the left all they know is hatred all they know is intolerance and all they know is lies they lie constantly about what is going on we played a clip before of anna navarro on cnn saying trump is going to get somebody in the media killed yet no one has been attacked hey chubby navarro it was satire from a 2007 clip a body slam get over it how come you guys could hide behind humor but we can't then the president can't Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage here. Check out all things on michaelsavage.com. Headlines, subscribe to the newsletter, order your copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. He will return on Wednesday. In the meantime, go to michaelsavage.com. Subscribe to the newsletter. Get your headlines and also order your copy of Trump's War. If you have not already, you're missing out. You're not going to be in on the conversation when people are talking about the contents of the book, which, as I always say, is like looking at the events of our time in real time. That's what it's like reading. So go there, michaelsavage.com. And you know what? Pick up a copy for a friend. Makes a fantastic gift. We've been talking about Dr. Savage's comments where it's making national headlines now. Go to Newsmax.com. There's a story there and other places. Dr. Savage telling President Trump to stop tweeting. Should he? Is it hurting his message? And there are other things going on out there on our July 4th weekend. We have Barack Obama taking pot shots 
at our current president of the United States and also millennials losing their patriotism. Only a third of millennials say that they're patriotic. I, I wonder why. I don't wonder why people hate their country, yet they choose to live here. It, it drives me crazy. There was a great thing the other day. There was a woman on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood Boulevard, and she, cute little, cute little lass, I will say, and she didn't just take a picture of Donald Trump's star. She cleaned it up. It made national headlines all over the internet. She made national headlines. She cleaned it up. It was fantastic. And meanwhile, all the other people are spitting on it. They're pouring stuff on it. They're, you know, writing curse words. It, it, it's an amazing thing, the hatred and vitriol that people have for our president. And I'll tell you what, they think the same thing. The people on the left think the same thing about those of us who voted for him. And it is nowhere more evident than in the media where they just lie and make things up. This is, before we get back to your calls, I, I, I love this clip. It's a little bit long. It's President Trump at the Celebration Freedom Rally at the JFK Center for Performing Arts. But I truly believe it captures and resonates with people the way it did with the campaign and where he'd like to take this country, even though the rest of the left is kicking and screaming. It's like they don't want positive things for the country. Uh, Robert, clip number nine, please. By the way, for those that are curious, we will build the wall, okay? <laughs> Because we understand that a country is more than just its geography. A nation is the sum of its citizens, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations. America is a land rich with history, traditions, and values. And as we have seen tonight, what a group this is tonight, America is also a land rich with heroes. And though we have many stories, we all share one home and one glorious destiny, a destiny that's getting better and better every single day. And whether we are black or brown or white, and you've heard me say this before, we all bleed the same red blood. We all salute the same great American flag, and we are all made by the same almighty God. All right, there you have it. I mean, it's talking about the things that resonated during the campaign and where he wants to take this country and everything that the left hates. Let's get back to the phones. 855-400-SAVAGE. Is, is the tweeting hurting his message, and should he stop tweeting, as Dr. Savage said? Uh, Judy at WXLM in Connecticut. Welcome to the Savage Nation, Judy. Hi, thank you. Um, I agree with everything everybody has said so far. I don't agree with uh, Dr. Savage's um, you know, tweeting. I, I believe that if he stopped tweeting tomorrow, we would get buried in Marxism and socialism because they, we've got a couple of generations of people I, I can't explain the adults but the young people they haven't learned anything in school they know they don't know history they don't know philosophy they don't know civics and they're listening to all these lies and they're buying it hook line and sinker that's why they're out you know protesting and so on over nothing and if it wasn't for uh, his tweets the republicans aren't doing anything they should they should be out educating everybody themselves they should be on every talk show they should be on every trying to educate people about what's really happening. Instead, the only one that's defending us is as our voice, and he said he would be, is President Trump. And out of uh, I disagree with you about the tweets about uh, I saw uh, on Fox. I think it was even this morning that out of something like 500 tweets over a certain period of time, there was this little minuscule number of them that are in these little that little cat Mika category. Which, by the way, uh, I don't hear anybody from the Trump camp curious about what's the Mika Joe story about why they're trying to get into house. <laughs> well, I don't and, and, well, here's the funny thing about the Mika tweet is he was right. She did have a facelift, and whether she was bleeding or not from her face, I don't know, but she did have a facelift. 
acknowledging that somebody had face work done, which is very obvious when you look at TV. You don't watch TV for a month and you go back or you don't see a certain personality for a few weeks. You come back and something's different, whether it's Botox or but she did have facial work done. How that's sexist. I don't know. But this is this is where they make things up, Margo. But obviously the CNN body slamming was satire. And, you know, they're going to use it as ammunition against him. I'm, I don't want him to stop tweeting 100 percent. I just think he should maybe stick to the policy stuff. My point is, is that if he stopped tweeting altogether, they'd make something up. If he stopped tweeting, all, if he only tweeted about the good things that he's doing and the things that he's accomplished, they wouldn't show that either. The only conduit he has to get to the people is in his rallies, in his spokespeople, and his uh, straight to the people on Twitter. And uh, I say that he should keep going, and if he, if he screws up a couple of times, who cares? I don't care. The 90% of what he's tweeting is about good stuff and what he's doing. And you know what? I don't feel forgotten anymore. And I listen to these TV pundits. Nobody asks me my opinion. They've got all these experts that don't. I feel like I know more than they do. You do. I, Trust me. I know a lot of these people. <laughs> Judy, thank you very much for your call. You you do know uh, you do know more than them. Uh, let's go us back to San Francisco. Let's go to Steve at KSFO. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Listen, Lou, the media wants you to think that this is the way that America thinks. When the media reports what they report, the dishonest media... They, they make it sound like this is the way that the majority of the people think, and that's baloney. And that's why Donald Trump is the president today. Uh, no cringing is needed. Let me remind you that Dr. Savage just a couple of weeks ago said that it's entirely adolescent, that his tweeting is, is adolescent, and that he should stop it. And then he came back after the weekend, and on Monday after that uh, uh, report on, on being adolescent, uh, he said, you know what, if it's good enough for uh, President Trump tweeting, that is, it's good enough for me. And um, no cringing is needed, Lou. Uh, there's no backing down from the tweeting at this point. There's going to be no surrender. Donald Trump is a fighter. The media is the bully. There's only one way to deal with the bully. That is true. But, Steve, I agree with you. But is it hurting his message? No, not at all. Because uh, if he stops doing the tweet, uh, as the previous callers have said, uh, you can, you can, that'll be the nail in his coffin. That will be the nail in his coffin if he stops doing what he's doing. He needs to set the narrative. He needs to keep the, the, the honest narrative about his reputation straight. And uh, no matter uh, what he does to try to appease the media, and or uh, uh, do anything to to, to tamp it down. With- he'll, lo- he'll lose support, which is support. Okay, Steve, thank you very much from KSFO. Do appreciate it. And in the vein of what uh, Steve in San Francisco just said, Robert, I'd like to play, this is clip number six, the president talking about the fake media. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. We won and they lost. The fact is the press has destroyed themselves because they went too far. Instead of being subtle and smart, they used a hatchet. And the people saw it right from the beginning. There you have it. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's get back to the phone. Joan at WABC New York, welcome to the Savage Nation. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I just want to comment on, oh, yeah, the tweet. I could be a little bit more presidential. I love Donald Trump. I love his messages. But he should curtail some of his language. But, John, let me let me interrupt you, please. What does that mean? That sounds like a, um, I know that you're in favor of him tweeting, but it should be more presidential. The media says that all the time, and I don't even think they could identify what they mean by that. 
I mean, what do you mean more presidential? He's just being himself, and he's been himself since the beginning of the campaign, unlike Barack Obama and many other politicians who really sold a bill of goods on who they were. We don't know who Barack Obama really is. He lied to us from the get-go. So to be presidential, does that mean to be phony and play the role that goes with the office or just be yourself? Because to me, Donald Trump is being himself, which I do like. Absolutely. I love him being himself. However, he can tone down his messages a little bit. Uh, We have a president that's putting himself out there and he's putting himself out for all kinds of criticism. He should try to ignore the critics. I mean, most of us who know better do ignore those critics, and I think he should, too. That's what I mean about being a little presidential. Let his his, um, group that's behind him answer for him in that that regard. May I make a, uh, a statement about... Carl Bernstein, he made a statement on your show a little while ago. Yeah, we, we played that. It sounds like, Joan, you're going to put soap in President Trump's mouth if he if he keeps it up. No, 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 no. That's not what I want. I want him to talk directly, uh, but not, you know, stop using the first-person pronoun all the time. Well, that's just a habit. But you say, just quickly, Carl Bernstein? Uh, Okay, I want to say something about Carl Bernstein. Is he still practicing journalism? Uh, He's making a lot of money appearing on TV. I wouldn't call it journalism. I would call it living off his old reputation of Watergate and cashing in and selling out. That's what I call Carl Bernstein. Absolutely. Journalism, it used to be a, a, a profession that you could look up to. Journalism now should be called opinionism. Because right. they don't report the news. They just give us their opinions. Well and what said. they're doing is just striving for better ratings. That was hey, Joan, I'll tell you what. And this is just my opinion that I think Brian Stelter on CNN, I think every time he tells, every time he spreads misinformation on CNN, he loses another hair and grows another chin. That's what I see going on there. But thanks for your call. Do appreciate it. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Lou Pate here with you talking about uh, really what's been going on in the Twitter world uh, or really in the media because of Donald Trump's Twitter. Obviously, a satirical tweet, a clip from 2007, him's body slamming Vince McMahon, but Vince McMahon's head was put um, covered with a CNN a logo, and now everybody's running around saying Trump's trying to take away free speech. No one is trying to take away the freedom of the press. No one's trying to take away anybody's right to freedom of expression, except for the left, except for the Bernsteins and the Stelters and the Navarros and the Joan Walshes who want to shut down opinion that they do not agree with. Folks, they're going to try to paint our president as mentally unstable. That's the next thing. You cannot impeach a president simply because you do not like him. You cannot impeach someone because of sour grapes, because your candidate was a criminal like Hillary Clinton and did not get elected. Crooked Hillary. It's as simple as that. They need to. It comes back to the same thing all the time. They need to get over the fact that they lost the election, and they've lost every election since the election. We'll be right back. My name is Lou Pate, in for Dr. Savage. Be sure, pick up your copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. More important now than ever, you can pick up a copy on michaelsavage.com. And while you're there, check out all the latest headlines and subscribe to the newsletter. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. Get your latest headlines and subscribe to the Savage newsletter at michaelsavage.com. While there, pick up a copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America, more important now than ever. Hey, coming up in the next hour, we're going to be talking about how more than a third of millenniums say they are, and I quote, not very patriotic or not patriotic at all. Are we losing our patriotism? We're going to be talking about that in the next hour. We're going to be taking your calls on that as well. 
855-400-SAVAGE. In the meantime, we're talking about Trump versus the media and the tweets to tweet or not to tweet. But this is the type of vile, this is an example of the vile rhetoric that goes on on MSNBC and CNN. Uh, Joan Walsh, who I truly believe is nuts and lives in a bubble that none of us would ever want to visit, not even on fantasy land at Disney World. But there's a, this woman has a special type of ignorance, bigotry, and hatred in her heart. Uh, listen to what she said about um, Trump voters. This is not about the president. This is about you and me, members of the Savage Nation family. Robert, clip 16, please. The really good research that's taken place since the election shows that fear of a changing America is the number one factor that you can see drive that really divides a Trump, a white Trump voter from a uh, white non-Trump voter, that it's fears of brown people, fears of losing uh, the majority. Notice she doesn't cite said research it's so good she can't say like the blah 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 research from this place or you know two seconds it would take to put it in there notice it's not in there no it's straight racism white trump voters obviously not true but the media likes to push it special the the only racists out there come from the left but you say that they call you a racist Lou Pate here with you. I encourage you on this 4th of July weekend, pick up your copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America, like reading the events of our time in real time. In the meantime, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation, Lou Pate, filling in for Dr. Savage for all of your latest headlines and to subscribe to the Savage Newsletter, go to michaelsavage.com. And on this 4th of July long holiday weekend, while you're there, pick up a copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. More important now than ever, it's the battle plan for our agenda. You see what's going on with the media attacking President Trump. You see what's going on with the establishment Republicans and establishment Democrats attacking Donald Trump. Yet still, he is out there working for us, trying to make the nation a better place. And well, who could be against that? Well, Dr. Savage had the vision to see it all, and he put it down in writing in Trump's war, his battle for America. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Now, it is 4th of July weekend. It's a day where people take off. We look back on our years of freedom and we set off fireworks. We barbecue. We eat too much food. We drink too many liquids, whether it's Gatorade water or of the adult beverage kind. And we have a good time. It's a, it's Sometimes it's a longer weekend than others. And this time it's a four-day weekend for some, three for others. Anyway, it's July 4th. It's a day we celebrate our nation's independence. We should reflect back on those who made the ultimate sacrifice throughout the hundreds of years so that we can live free and enjoy it. And at times, unfortunately, we all take it for granted. But we have Veterans Day and Memorial Day and all of those other days for that. But this day is equally important to really take a second and reflect back on those who have fought, those who have died, those who have fought and lived because they're amongst us as well. So it's kind of like every day. But July 4th is a day of patriotism, a positive day. Red, white, and blue, fireworks, friends, family, barbecues. And people talk about patriotism. We wear red, white, and blue. I do. And um, they put flags up. And people like in my community, some people line their driveways with the little flags. It's great. But as we are involved in this 4th of July weekend, um, well, Americans like me, I'm pretty sure about my own patriotism, okay? And I like the fact that Donald Trump is our president because I feel his patriotism is severe. But, well, more than a third of millennials say they're not very patriotic or not patriotic at all. 
In the latest Economist YouGov poll, 4 in 10 Americans say they are very patriotic. 8 in 10 said that they are at least somewhat patriotic. But when it comes to the country as a whole, nearly half think the country is becoming less patriotic. Is this true? Are we losing our patriotism? 855-400-SAVAGE. Today, almost twice as many Republicans as Democrats claim to be patriotic. And that gap was only a little narrower four years ago. Then, four years ago, it was 61% of Republicans and 33% of Democrats described themselves as very patriotic. Now, patriotism, it's also an old identification of the old, not the young. Now, 61% of those who are age 65 and older say they are very patriotic, but just 20% of those under the age of 30 say about themselves that they are not patriotic. In fact, more than a third of those between 18 and 29 say they are not patriotic. So I ask you, the listeners to the Savage Nation, the Savage Nation family, are we less patriotic now? And if so, why? And why do you think it falls along party lines? Why are Republicans more patriotic than Democrats? Admittedly so. This is not me saying Republicans are more patriotic, Democrats are not. This is in the survey. You go to the Economist YouGov poll, and you talk about how Democrats say they're not patriotic, so or as patriotic as Republicans. The numbers show that. Uh, which makes me often wonder, why is it that Democrats think this country is a bad place. I know if you watch the media, they'll have you think we're Islamophobic, we're bigoted, we're uh, homophobic, we're racist, and that's not, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Of course, there's going to be pockets of this, that, and the other thing. We're a nation of 320 plus million people. Of course, you're going to get a couple of knuckleheads out there doing stupid things, saying stupid things. Mostly they're on the left (laughs) and in the major cities, but hey, That's a story for another day, I guess. But the young people, why do you think young people are less patriotic than older folks? Probably comes down to older folks, well, I say seniors, voted, they vote more, and they vote more because their life experience took them down that road, whether it was the Vietnam War or whether it was the Persian Gulf War, or the Korean conflict, or even Grenada, and going for Manuel Noriega, any type of military conflict, I truly believe, number one, matures you almost instant, and number two, really makes you appreciate what you have, appreciates the things that you took for granted when you were young and dumb. We all do it. It's, it's not a bad trait to have. It's just what happens when you're young, you're running around, you want to have parties, you're in school, or you're just starting out in your career, depending on what road you took, and you're not thinking of You think you're going to live forever. You know, you can get drunk and bounce back the next day. You can get a sports injury and be fine in no time. <laughs> and then, you know, the two decades later, the years wear on, and it's like, whoa, you know, that, that twisted knee isn't healing so fast. But with those lingering injuries comes maturity from life experience. And a lot of young people just do not have life experience, obviously, because they're young. And with that, they have not known what it is like to sacrifice or, more importantly, almost what it's like to lose. You look at the what they call the Great War, which was later turned to World War I, and then World War II, where we have the greatest generation. And I feel underrepresented those in the Korean War. And, you know, Vietnam, they, the, the veterans there, I tip my hat to you as well, they finally got their due, but not until many years later. Then when we entered into the era of the Persian Gulf War, Kuwait and all of that, Saddam Hussein, it, and, and even going into Somalia, it was kind of like it becomes a media war where people really lost, they began, I feel, in my opinion, began to lose the appreciation for what our fighting men and women were doing for us in whether it's trying to stop a dictator or some type of other tyranny around the world. People, it became a media sensation. It just, it, you know, back in the Vietnam War, you're sitting there, you're watching it on TV. That's, you know, I, I didn't, that was before my time, but you get the idea, people who did. Now it's, you know, with this global media and everything's in your device, everything comes to you instantly and it's not, it's not uncommon to see really graphically disgusting things that war brings. So 
people have been jaded. I don't know if they've if they've lost the the sensitivity towards it or what, or they just don't care. I don't know. And I'd like to know from you, the listeners to the Savage Nation, why do you think a third of millennials say they are not patriotic or they're not patriotic at all, not very patriotic? Are we losing our patriotism? Are we less patriotic? And if so, why? 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I just think it has to go with the fact, and I don't want another war, but it just has to go with the fact that we had it too easy. This country has it too easy now. People think it's a bad place. The media will tell you it's a bad place, and it's not a bad place. And you you get up every day. Your food is all there. Your water is all there, the cleanest water ever. Most places have fluoride in their water. It's helping your teeth, and you don't even know it. Uh, Jobs, you know, sometimes they're hard to come by, but if, you know, you work hard at it, hopefully something will come. Vehicles, transportation, you can drive from Seattle to Miami, from Maine to San Diego. No one's bothering you. We have it too easy in this country. I don't want it to be tougher. I really don't. But when you have it too easy, you get soft. And I truly believe, not because I'm older than millennials, that millennials are soft because they've had it too easy. Am I wrong? Because they've never had to know what it's like. Do you really think about the Korean War generation, the Vietnam guys, and World War II, 18 years old? You know, running up on Omaha Beach or, you know, down the Ho Chi Minh Trail or chasing after Saddam Hussein in the early 1990s. That stuff happens now and people don't even check in, even not on a lighter note, but on a scientific note. It used to be a huge thing, putting someone up in space. They'd wheel the TV into the classrooms. Now it's like, you know, shuttles were taken off left and right. We don't even have the shuttle program anymore. And they shuttle launches and shuttles coming back. They weren't even showing it in the classrooms anymore. It's it's part of what whittles away at our patriotism. When people were, the space program was was in its golden era and people were watching on TV and people would, um, like I said, little kids being having the TV brought into the room, this gave, this gave little kids, six, seven, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, whatever, it gave them a sense of being, a sense of pride in their country. It's like, look at us, an American flag on the side of the ship, an American astronaut going up or coming down. And it's like, that's our country. It's like, we're the greatest country in the world, American exceptionals. We don't do that anymore. And it chips away, and it chips away, and it chips away. And then you have a generation who's like, yeah, well, what's the big deal? Going up to space, we do it all the time. Oh, what's the big deal? Yeah, another war. We we win most of them. We're, we're pretty good at it. We're the biggest nation in the world. Of course we should beat up on, you know, it's like that type of mentality where it's expected. It's expected. But we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with your calls. Lou Pate here with you. Are we less patriotic now than our aunts, our uncles, our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents? Um, and, well, why is it that a third of millennials say they are not very patriotic or not patriotic at all? Are we losing our patriotism? 855-400-SAVAGE. My name is Lou Pate. I encourage you on this 4th of July weekend and every day after to pick up a copy of Trump's War or at least pick one up as a gift for a friend. They will, you will be beloved, trust me. More important now than ever, it is our battle plan for our agenda. And go to michaelsavage.com because if you'll notice, if you go to michaelsavage.com during the show, many of the stories that we talk about here come straight from there. So you'll be right in tune with what we're talking about here on The Savage Nation. My name is Lou Pate, and you are listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Paid filling in for Dr. Savage. He'll be back on Wednesday. In the meantime, go to michaelsavage.com for all the latest headlines and subscribe to the Savage Newsletter delivered free to your inbox. Come on, don't make me come to your house and twist your arm. And while at michaelsavage.com, pick up a copy of Trump's War. 
his battle for America. You listen to the Savage Nation. You know about the battle. And trust me, when reading this, it's like reading about those events in real time. More important now than ever, it is the battle plan of our deplorable agenda. (laughs) I wanted to throw in deplorable. It's just the battle plan for our agenda. But, hey, the media looks at us as less. They look at us as racist. They look at us as bigoted. We mentioned the Joan Walsh cut before. Uh, Truly amazing. But now we're talking about millennials. And they're coming up with, let's just say, taking for granted the freedoms that we have in this country. And why is that? Let's get to the phones. 855-400-SAVAGE. Steve at WKZO in Michigan. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, Are we less patriotic than we used to be, Steve, and why? Uh, I believe so. I grew up in the 60s, and we were you know, required to do the Pledge of Allegiance in school, and we learned about Americanism and patriotism through our school system. So I think the schools are letting kids down. You know, that's an interesting point. I wish I would have brought it up earlier, Steve, but thank you. The Pledge of Allegiance, we used to say it in school every morning, and nobody complained. There were no teachers protesting. There was um, some schools I was in where we said it in the classroom. Everybody would stand up, put your hand over your heart, face the flag, say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then start your lesson for the day. Another school I was in, they would actually do it over the loudspeaker, like the principal or the dean or the assistant principal uh, would do it. But there was never any protests. There was there was never anybody all bent out of shape. It's totally different now, Steve. There'd be lawsuits if you did that now. Yep, unfortunately. And if it's not being taught at home, where are they going to get it? Well, now, it says here on my screen, no one is educated about how great our country is. And the history that is taught about our country in in the books, it's a lot of it is wrong. Or it's very brief, and they're leaving out key parts because there is a liberal agenda to rewrite history in this country. Steve, are you aware of that? Oh, yeah, I believe that. My uh, pastor's a teacher, retired, and he says that, you know, the school systems are a mess now. No, a mess is an understatement. But, Steve, thanks for your call. Do appreciate it. Uh, Let's go to Larry, K-I-N-A in Kansas. Welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you today? I'm okay. Yourself? Um, Good, but not pretty. Okay. Well, what, what do you got to say as we head to the bottom of the hour here? To reiterate what the previous caller said, the uh, Bleeding Heart Liberals have succeeded in banning the Pledge of Allegiance from schools. They banned a Confederate flag from our history, which is, you yeah, know, they need a history lesson because it wasn't about slavery that the Civil War was started. But to get to the Millennials, the, uh, the Millennials are too soft. They've... The majority of them have never had to work for anything in their life. Uh, they've been given everything because they have adopted what was started with the civil rights movement in the 60s, which is an, ex- an expectation of entitlement. And it's, it's just horrendous that, that, they, that they, have been, they have been taught all of the stuff, like he was saying and you were saying, about the wrong stuff about our history in school, and they don't know any better. They've been brainwashed. It, they, you know, from kindergarten through twelfth grade, and then and, and then it continues in in the universities. It amazes me how the youth of our country have been brainwashed. With all of this, all of this stuff from bleeding heart liberals that should never be teaching our children at any level. Hey, well said there, Larry. Thanks for your call from KINA in Kansas. Lou Pate here with you. Dr. Savage will be back on Wednesday. In the meantime, get your news and headlines from michaelsavage.com. Pick up your tr- copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America. Are we losing our patriotism? 855-400-SAVAGE. You are listening to The Savage Nation. Savage. It's the 
Savage Nation. Lou Pate filling in for Dr. Savage. He will return on Monday. Get the latest headlines. Subscribe to the Savage Newsletter. It all can be found on michaelsavage.com. Trump's War, His Battle for America. That's the book. That's the tome that tells the story of our times. If you're not reading it, well, then you're not up on things 100%, so you want to check it out. Yeah, more, more important now than ever. I cannot say that enough. This is the reason why the book debuted, debuted number one on the New York Times bestseller list. We have been talking about patriotism or the lack thereof from the younger generation, the millennials, and how many of them are not patriotic at all, or some of them are very little patriotism. And I asked you, are we losing our patriotism on this July 4th weekend? Well, there comes a time where you have to look and say, well, Millennials are young. They grew up the last 10 years and they're very formative years under who? We had Barack Obama as a president. So is it surprising that millennials are not patriotic at all when they grew up hearing about how a country is horrible, it's racist, it's bigoted, it's homophobic, it's Islamophobic, which is a made up word. Um, Obamacare, which doesn't work. Enter, here's the name that many of you listening to the Savage Nation are going to know. Charlie Gard, a 10-month-old boy with a rare genetic condition known as mitochondrial DNA depletion syndrome. It's said to affect 16 children in the world. Just 16 children. That's how bad this thing is. Well, if you're not familiar with the story... It's a very sad and tragic story. His parents, Chris Gard and Connie Yates from Bedfont uh, in England, they obviously want to keep him alive. Doctors and judges are saying it would cause him significant harm, and they are not allowing the parents to bring him to the United States for, for treatment. Doctors at the Green Ormond Street Hospital for Children in London who've been caring for Charlie were granted permission by the court to turn off his life uh, support. Now, it, it was expected that Charlie could be removed from the essential devices uh, just as a few days ago. What the hospital said in a statement, it was putting together unspecific plans to give the uh, 10-month-old baby and his parents more time together as a family. Enter President Donald Trump, who just tweeted out this morning. We've been talking so much about the tweets in this show and whether they hurt or whether they harm and the media attacking him. Folks, you are not going to see this on fake news outlet MSNBC. You're not going to see this on fake news CNN. Donald Trump tweeted, and I quote, if we can help little Charlie Gard, as per our friends in the UK and the Pope, we would be delighted to do so. So basically what we have here is a 10 month old on the cusp of 11 months going to be allowed to die because the socialized medicine in the UK doesn't work. Now, some of you might be saying, Lou, what does this have to do with the United States? What does this have to do with anything? It has to do with saving a baby's life. It has to do with the baby is not being cared for because he is going to be allowed to die under the socialized medicine in the UK. Obamacare would be the same thing. If they had it the way they wanted it, universal health care, single payer, socialized medicine. This is Obamacare in the UK. You cannot hide behind the fact that, oh, it's the UK, it's apples and oranges. No. Socialized medicine is socialized medicine, whether it's single payer universal care here in the United States, socialized medicine up in Canada or socialized medicine in the UK. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. And the result is always the same. It doesn't work. Do you remember they laughed at Sarah Palin years ago when she talked about death panels? Folks, the Charlie Guard situation is exactly what she was talking about. This little baby is not being cared for. They will not even allow his parents to put him on a plane and bring him to the United States where care is waiting. The president of the United States, our president, Donald Trump, is trying to lend a hand to save the life of this little boy. And the doctors and the courts, the judges in the UK are saying no. They are going to allow this little boy to die instead of shipping him here. And you say, well, Lou, 
How does that pertain to millennials not being patriotic? Because before Barack Obama, we had the best of everything in this country. We had the best medical facilities. We had the best schools. We had the best students. We had the best manufacturing plants. And it incrementally took a shot hour after hour, day after day, month after month, year after year. A, a verbal shots, the financial shots, and the media beating up on everything. And now we are, we're the lowest when it comes to education, mathematics, and the sciences, our medical facilities, although still superior to many around the world, uh, have taken a shot because of regulations and you can't do this and you can't do that. I'm happy that President Trump has turned those around. And now we have little Charlie Gard becoming a political football when it shouldn't be about politics. It shouldn't be about geography. It's like, save the kid's life, okay? He has this rare disorder, this mitochondrial DNA depletion syndrome. 16 kids in the, in the world only have it. I'm looking at a picture of him right now. breaks my heart. Save him. But bureaucrats would rather let him. Would they let their kid die? Would they let their grandchild die? Would they let their niece or nephew die? This is this is not some political argument that's to be won and then you get bragging rights the next day because you stopped a travel ban or you stopped a pipeline from being built or you stopped a Supreme Court justice from being nominated for a week. No, no. These are political arguments where people brag about stupid things. I mean, they're important, but they're stupid in, in, in terms of the big picture. This is a life. There should be no borders. There should be no language. There should be no culture. When it comes to all of this, it should just be about saving the kid's life and then making his parents move forward and be able to raise him. And then trying to save the other kid's life. But because of politics, because they do not want to admit that socialized medicine doesn't work here in the United States, they don't cover it. CNN's not going to cover this. Facelift Mika is not going to cover this. All they want to do is talk about themselves and be the story rather than just report on the news, which is their job. So what we have here now is a little boy who is going to die. And then he's going to become a very small footnote in history because you're going to have Jeff Zucker, you're going to have Phil Griffith, and you're going to have the other people in the elite media here who are not going to cover it. Why are they not going to cover it? Because to cover this story is going to highlight that socialized medicine, whether here in the United States or around the world, does not work. That death panels are real. That judges and bureaucrats decide on the fate of your baby or your grandbaby it gets to live or die. That's what the case is here. And if this case gets the national prominence that I hope it will now that President Trump has jumped in, well, I'd be, huh, I'd be curious to see how the mainstream media here in the United States covers it. Because it's appalling. A lot of people are not even aware of it. It's out there. Fox has covered it a little bit. To my knowledge, CNN and MSNBC have not covered it all. Same for ABC, NBC, and CBS. Why? Because it doesn't fit the political narrative now that we have donald trump in what is what are they going to say how are they going to try to spin this negatively it shouldn't have to be spun who is against saving the life of a child whether it's in china or whether it's in the uk or japan or vietnam or somewhere in central america who cares all right liberals always pretend they say the words and they pretend to care about these things well here's your chance to put up or shut up. You want to save the life of little Charlie Gard? You want to have this boy and his family move forward and have a nice life together? And he can contribute to society as an adult later on and maybe reflect back on this? Fine. But because of political reasons, they don't want to cover it here in this nation. Because of political reasons, they will not give him the health care that he needs in England, in the UK, because of socialized medicine. Folks, this is Obamacare. This is why, well, the, the horrible version that President, former President Obama put into play here didn't work. That's why he had to tweak it 49 times, and it still was an abysmal failure because nothing socialized worked. Do you hear me, Bernie Sanders and your thieving wife? Nothing works when socialism. I hope you're enjoying your ocean, your uh, waterfront home up there. You know, I don't have one. Socialism. Bernie lives on the water and the rest of us have to live in boxes. It is truly amazing. So this is what you have. 
you're going to hear the same old rhetoric from the Schumers, the Pelosi's, the Sanders, the Feinsteins and alike talking about the political narrative of the day. You know how Trump is crazy. Trump is unstable. Trump needs to be impeached. You're not going to hear one of them say Trump is trying to save a 10, 11 month old baby in England who's dying from some rare disease that only a handful of people have in the nation. And the British government is willing to allow this baby to die than to allow him to come to the United States where he might have the best chance of living. But it's not happening. It's appalling. It's disgusting. And yet there's no outrage. Oh, 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 Trump commented on on some MSNBC fluffers facelift. Who cares? Who cares? She had a facelift. He was telling the truth. No one wants to talk about little Charlie Gard. President Trump tweeted about it today. I'll repeat it. If we can help little Charlie Gard, as per our friends in the UK and the pulp, we would be delighted to do so. But as of right now, it's not working. And the tweet that President Trump uh, points out implicitly highlights the pitfalls in the British health care system. That's a publicly funded system, socialized medicine, okay? Now, we have our own health care thing going on here. I don't want to open up a whole health care debate, but this is why we shouldn't have it here. Now, what's going to happen? We here at the Savage Nation, when Dr. Savage comes back, I'm sure we'll keep you updated on little Charlie Gard, but it's about saving a baby's life. Like I said, when it comes to saving the life of a child, there should be no borders, no language, and no culture. It's one of the themes here at the Savage Nation. So when liberals say, oh, I care about the hungry. I care about the downtrodden. I care about abused women. I care about sick children. I don't want anybody to go without health care. This child, Charlie Gard, is going without health care. Where are the voices? Are you on your boat in Nantucket? Off of Martha's Vineyard somewhere? Or are you on MSNBC calling for President Trump to execute Jared Kushner? Or are you on um, CNN complaining about Russia and saying that Russia, uh, Trump is going to have journalists killed? Come on, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm getting flustered here. This is so frustrating. This baby is going to die, and I don't hear one voice in the liberal media saying, I'm with President Trump on trying to help this kid and bring him and his parents here to the the greatest country in the world where you'd have a fighting chance. We are very what we are depreciating folks. Okay. It is being whittled away. Our patriotism, our quality of life, the way we look at things in this country, it is all being painted in such a negative, hateful way. All I'll say is this: Sarah Palin was right. Wherever you are, Sarah Palin, enjoying your 4th of July. Death panels are real. Charlie guards case proves that anybody from the left listening, Email me, call me, come to my house, but you won't because you don't want to talk about the truth. That socialized medicine does not work. Death panels are real. And think about that. Tell that to your congressmen and women when they're voting on health care. Tell that to your senators when they're voting on health care. We'll take a quick break. My name is Lou Pate. You are listening to the home of Trump's war, his battle for America, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's a Savage Nation. Lou Pate in for Dr. Savage. In the meantime, before he returns on Wednesday, go to michaelsavage.com for all things Dr. Savage. Your headlines, subscribe to the newsletter, order your copy of Trump's War, His Battle for America, more important now than ever. You know, this is the 4th of July, and there was a time before Barack Obama where patriotic Americans really wouldn't have put up with a foreign leader mocking our president. But now we have, of all people, Vincente Fox, with the help of people at a company called Super Deluxe, put out a video that's supposed to be satirical. It's five minutes long, and I'm just going to play one segment of it for you here. Is this something we should be putting up with a guy who we used to give $30 billion at a time? Uh, Robert, if you will, clip number two. Donald, do you want to be a hero? Because you can. And it is so easy. All you have to do is quit. Just walk away. 
It will make so many people happy, including you. You can finally golf again. And you can go back to the woman you love, Ivanka. But if you won't quit, Donald, please, just do your very best not to blow up the world. Ah, an incest comment about Donald Trump and Ivanka, his daughter. Oh, yes, that is Vincente Fox, the former president, the failed president of Mexico. Huh, is the, is the mainstream media going to condemn this? Well, it's just another incestual comment, right? Bill Maher has made them. A lot of people from the Hollywood and liberal media have made comments like this. Is this not beyond the pale? As we Americans, should we put up with this? Well, we're getting less patriotic. Back in the day... Regardless whether your president was Democrat or Republican, nobody would have allowed this to stand. And this won't even be mentioned in the media. The former president of Mexico talking about incest between the current president of the United States and his daughter. There'll be no outrage. There might even be some jokes. And it won't be covered on the cable news. It won't be covered on the network news. So you have to ask yourself... Well, where are we going as a nation? Is it a good place? It's our Independence Day, and you have to ask yourself, do I like what I see? Do I like where we're going? Would this have ever happened even 10, 12? Certainly wouldn't have happened in the last seven years. Could you imagine Vincente Fox talking about incest between Malia and Barack Obama? Oh, my God. The world, as we know it, would have blown up. (laughs) But that's the world we live in today comes down to hypocrisy. That's what it's all about. Hypocrisy from the media, hypocrisy from the left. Hey, happy 4th of July to one and all on the Savage Nation listening area. Um, Have a safe and fun 4th of July. Remember, America is the greatest country in the world. Special thanks to Robert. Special thanks to Jim. Folks, I can't tell you how much they help me do this show. They are truly amazing to work with, and I appreciate every minute they give me. Happy 4th of July, everybody. You are listening to the home of Trump's war, the Savage Nation. Savage.